One. The Knights to TW an 850-40 is about $100 and delivers 850 lumens backed by 15,000 candela. While it's no mod light, it's capable enough for home defense and even concealed carry. The TW an 850XO will fit most Streamlight TL or incompatible holsters, making it easy to carry with industry standard holsters. A set of ambidextrous toggle switches makes controlling the light easily. The light has both a mo- The TW in 850-40 throws and two. Harrison started as a budget red dot company but has steadily grown and slowly branched out. This year they brought us night vision, but last year they brought us a series of weapon lights going by the clever title of PID. It's fairly easy to figure out that PID stands for Positive Identification. The base level Hollison PID costs around $100, and the light has both high and low modes. Its high mode hits the target with 1,000 lumens and is propelled by 23,000 candela. In the low mode, the light has 500 lumens backed by 11,000 lumens. It's a good bit of power for a budget-friendly light. On high mode, the battery lasts 30 minutes, on low, it lasts 60. This light uses a single battery which gives a slimmer design profile but also cuts its runtime. Still, half an hour is a lot of time for home defense. Harlison includes a rechargeable and removable 18,350 battery. You can purchase a second and immediately change if you forget to plug your light in. A set of ambidextrous paddles makes it easy to turn on, and a set of rail keys makes it easy to attach to various guns. Harrison provides an IP68 waterproof rating. The light is more on the full size than small, with an overall length of 3.6 inches and a weight of 5.3 ounces. Three. The Streamlight HLX provides rifles with 1,000 lumens of white light backed by 27,600 candela. It's fairly powerful for a light that costs around $120. That's the base level light, and there are costlier versions with rechargeable batteries. You can most certainly get away with the base level HLX rail mount design for home defense and even duty use on a budget. You can always add a fancier pressure switch or rechargeable battery system if you choose. The dual fuel design of the HLX allows you to use either Co-123 batteries or the Streamlight SLB26 rechargeable options. Battery life tops out at 1.25 hours. The low mode provides 60 lumens, which isn't much but enough for non-tactical tasks. On low, it extended battery life to 20 hours. In high mode, the light is focused and designed to maximize range with an intense hotspot. Shooters can use a momentary or constant setting and swap between a pressure switch or a clicky rear button. The light is surprisingly compact for its power at 5.43 inches long, and it weighs only 6.4 ounces. It's acceptable on a carbine, or pistol, or short-barreled rifle. The beam can light up a target out to 100 yards easily, making it easy to establish pit while maintaining a good standoff distance. A lesser light makes it tough to take advantage of a rifle's extra range. With the standard button in place, the light is rated for water resistance up to an EPS 7 level but the addition of the pressure switch knocks it down to Ips 4. In short, don't go swimming with the HL-10. 4. The rig is a pretty neat design. It's a little costlier than the HLX at $150. With that in mind, the rig comes with a pressure switch, manual switch, two batteries, and a Picatinny or M lock mount option. What makes the rig neat is that it's an angled foregrip with an integrated light. The light is 500 lumens and the rig throws it wide. It's designed for a home defense rifle. 
Indoors it fills the room with light, but outdoors it's a bit lacking for long-range rifle use. The rig has several modes that the user can manually cycle through to fine-tune the amount of light and the amount of battery being used. Controls are not ambidextrous, but the button can be swapped from side to side to meet the needs of right and wrong-handed shooters. On the flip side, you can replace the button with a pressure switch if you so choose. The combination of a grip and light makes it a dual-purpose tool and helps improve the ergonomics of your entire rifle. Finding the right grip and light combination can be tricky, but the rig takes care of it. The rechargeable batteries can be charged in place with a USB-C charger. So plug your gun in before you go to sleep, and you'll be good to go. 5. Streamlight makes one of the more affordable lights, and one of the more powerful. This light usually costs around $130, it replaces the far end of your Remington 870, Mossberg 500 series, or Mossberg Shockwave and provides an integrated light system that replaces your standard pump. The TL Wrecker makes shotgun light placement very easy and prevents common issues from using pressure switches and mounted lights. That light throws 1,000 lumens of light backed by 20,000 candela. It's nice and bright as well as wide. The beam goes fairly far, but also has plenty of spill. This allows you to fill a small area with light and get light from edge to edge of your vision. It's a great design for a shotgun because shotguns are such close range, rapid reflex weapons. The light doesn't add much weight to your setup. At 12.10 ounces, this doesn't create an off-balance feeling in your gun. Its controls utilize two ambidextrous buttons that are absolutely massive and easy to use. They have nice tactile feedback that's quite clicky. This light is perfect for home defense and even some duty use. It's fairly rugged, and I've been using one for a couple of years now on my go-to-home defense shotgun. The aggressive grip texture makes it easy to hold onto and manipulate. Dedicated shotgun for end lights are expensive. The Surefire DSF costs more than my Mossberg 500, so the TL Wrecker keeps the integrated design 